Good morning. Uh, welcome, Commissioner, staff, and members of the public viewing this meeting through our live stream. My name is Wayne Melnick, Chief Counsel for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. I am going to turn the proceedings over to Board President Richard Lewis. Thank you, Wayne. Good morning. I'm Richard Lewis, and I'm honored to be the president of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commissioners. I welcome all Pennsylvania's anglers and boaters today and thank my fellow commissioners for joining me on this meeting. Welcome to day one of the 139th meeting of the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission that will be conducted today and tomorrow, October 19th and 20th. This meeting is being broadcast on Facebook in live in real time. And a recording of the meeting will be available on the commission's Facebook page immediately after the meeting ends. And a recording will also be posted to the commission's YouTube page within a few days. As with our last two quarterly meetings, it will be apparent that this is not our usual format. The circumstances surrounding the COVID-19 epidemic have made it unsafe for us to hold our normal face-to-face -face public meetings. Nevertheless, we recognize the need to comply with Pennsylvania's Sunshine Act and open meetings law, and the board is meeting in this virtual format with a live stream broadcast to the public so we can continue to conduct the important business of the commission. Our meeting will follow a published agenda as is customary for all of our formal meetings, and that agenda was made available in advance to everybody, to the public on the Fish and Boat Commission's website, www.fishandboat.com. For those of you who haven't had a chance to look at the agenda or don't have it printed out, it's a long document. The agenda items are going to be summarized on the screen so that you can follow right along with the agenda items on our live streams. One difference you will notice in this virtual meeting is the elimination of the board's committee meetings. Presentations that would have normally been made to committees of the board will instead be made to the board as a whole. And these presentations will be part of this live stream. Another difference is that although it's customary for the president to chair the meeting from start to end, I have delegated certain of these procedural portions of the meeting to the commission's chief counsel, Wayne Melnick. This will greatly simplify, save time, and increase the efficiency of the meeting rather than passing the microphone back and forth between myself and Wayne and staff. Wayne will act as a moderator for the meeting and it'll help us move things along much faster. The meeting will include a mix of voting as well as discussion items. Uh, please note that the discussion items correspond with specific elements from our agency strategic plan, and this is by design. The rest of the commissioners and I are in alignment with staff as we complete the second quarter of operating under our agency's new strategic plan. On behalf of the full board of commissioners, I'd like to thank the commission staff for their attention to detail and preparing for and conducting this as well as our past quarterly meetings. We are all looking forward to the day, especially me, when we can resume in-person, face-to-face board meetings to discuss our agency's business face-to-face. -face. In the meanwhile, we will do the best we can uh, using virtual technology. I would ask everybody to understand that there are sometimes glitches in this technology. Uh, there are uh, bandwidth problems, or sometimes signals, uh, internet signals get dropped, or people uh, end up having a signal break off in the middle of something. And we will please exercise patience and perseverance, and we will do the very best job we can to make this a seamless and, uh, and meaningful meeting for everybody that's here. Uh, one additional item, uh, we plan to take a break at or near the top of every hour so people can get up and stretch and, uh, and, and take care of whatever they need to do for a few minutes. And these breaks will be uh, five minutes long. So on behalf of everybody, thank you for being here. I will now turn the meeting over to Wayne Melnick 
to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and to conduct the roll call and to move ahead with the rest of the meeting. Wayne? Thank you, Commissioner. We will begin with a Pledge of Allegiance. Only my microphone will be live at this time, but I invite all of you to participate in the pledge along with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Commissioners, I now call the roll. <coughs> Commissioner Ally. Present. Commissioner Anderson. Present. Commissioner Brock. Present. Commissioner Charlesworth. Present. Commissioner Gibney. Present. Commissioner Hassar. Present. Commissioner Pastore. Present. Commissioner Small. Present. Vice President Kaufman. Present. President Lewis. Yes, I'm still here, President. President Lewis, we have a quorum. Good. Commissioners, COVID-19 considerations have also caused adjustment to the way public comments are being handled at this meeting. Ordinarily, the board would open the floor to members of the public who wish to appear before the board. Since it is not possible to have the public physically appear, and the limitations of conferencing software have made live commenting impractical, the public was to, invited to submit comments via telephone. Those messages were recorded, uploaded, emailed, and made available for commissioners to review. Uh, we received comments from three individuals. These recordings can contain personally identifiable information that we do not wish to make part of the permanent recording of this meeting, so I will summarize those comments now. First comment was from John McCarthy for Cassie PA. Mr. McCarthy is interested in starting a program to further the natural reproduction of wild trout in various areas of the state. This program would limit harvest to every four years on certain streams on a, on a trophy trout system to enhance population growth of wild trout, which would also benefit tributaries of the initial streams. Kish Creek near Reedsville would be a good example where streams flowing into the Lehigh River. Mr. McCarthy asked us how a program could be focused to get this started. The second uh, comment came from Shane Fitzgerald, no hometown given. Mr. Fitzgerald wants the commission to provide the exact date trout will be stocked in a stream or lake. Mr. Fitzgerald believes the current practice of announcing the week of stocking is not working. The final comment was from Jeff Fister, Cowansville, PA. Mr. Fister provided a short report on the past summer's boating activity on the Allegheny River. He reports an increase in boating activities, unsafe operations, rowdiness, and partying. Mr. Fister was disappointed no, no, no motorboat noise enforcement had started yet, but understands COVID-19 played a role in the delay. Mr. Fister indicates the Commission Bureau of Law Enforcement did enhance two additional patrols in this area, and he is grateful. Mr. Fister promises to send Colonel Britchard and President Lewis suggestions to enhance safe boating in Pennsylvania, and he thanks the commission for its continued service in these times. That concludes the public comments that we received. Uh, commissioners, the first voting item for consideration is the review and approval of minutes from the July 2020 
quarterly meeting. These minutes have been previously forwarded to you for review. Before I call for a motion, I want to remind commissioners to please identify themselves whenever speaking for the benefit of our audience. Commissioners, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? This is Commissioner Lewis. I make a motion that the minutes be approved as published. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I'll second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. This will be a voice vote. All in favor, please signify by saying yes. 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 All those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the minutes are approved. I will now turn things over to the executive director for his report. All right, great. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking our commissioners and staff for their dedication, perseverance, and adherence to best practices and safety protocols over the last six months. Despite the circumstances, we continue to serve the anglers, boaters, and aquatic resources of Pennsylvania. Thank you for what you're doing and how you're doing it. And thank you to everyone who is fishing and boating this year in the Commonwealth. Now, the surge of interest in being on the water that we saw this summer has continued through the fall, and we've consistent seen, consistent, consistently seen about a 20% increase in fishing license sales. The more than 970,000 licensed anglers in Pennsylvania this year are the most in nearly 25 years, and we have never had so many people paddling in kayaks and canoes. Um, we thank you for choosing to fish and boat in your free time, and look forward to welcoming you back to the water next year. One new feature since we last met is a reformatting of how we present pro progress on the strategic plan approved by the board in July. Uh, staff are hard at work implementing the plan, and we hope the color-coded, annotated report is a useful tool for transparently tracking our progress. Thanks again to the board for your help in crafting a meaningful, action-oriented plan. And as Richard noticed, staff presentations at this and future quarterly meetings will correspond to specific items from the strategic plan. We'd also like to call everyone's attention listening uh, to two grant opportunities with deadlines of December 30th. As you'll hear tomorrow uh, for boating facilities grants, applicants may seek funding for site acquisition, project design and engineering, development, expansion, aquatic invasive species prevention, and major rehabilitation of recreational boat access facilities. This program is designed to help local governments and eligible nonprofit groups provide or improve public recreational boat access facilities in their communities that are open and available for general public use. Thanks to the availability of additional federal funding for the Delaware River Conservation Act, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, we will give special consideration to projects that provide public boating access in the Delaware River watershed. For those at the other end of Pennsylvania, we are pleased to be accepting applications for the expanded Erie Access Improvement Grant Program. Grants are open to public entities that are interested in the acquisition of lands, easements, and other property rights, the development, improvement, or rehabilitation of public access sites, um, projects that benefit fish habitat, or thanks to Act 56 of 2020, any other projects that benefit public fishing in the Lake Erie watershed. Finally, if you remember anything from today and tomorrow, it is to please wear your life jacket. To date, there have been nine recreational boating fatalities in Pennsylvania, and none of the victims were wearing their life jackets. It is the most important thing you can do to protect yourself on the water and ensure you arrive home safely. Reminder that our cold water life jacket requirement starts on November 1st. From then until April 30th, life jackets are mandatory for anyone aboard a boat less than 16 feet in length and on all canoes, kayaks, and paddle boards. Most boating accidents occur in the summer, but a disproportionate number of fatalities happen in the cold weather months. Again, thank you for being safe on the water. That concludes my report.
Thank you. An executive session was held earlier this morning, Monday, October 19, 2020, at, a, at 8 a.m. Items discussed included personnel matters, potential real estate acquisitions, and pending litigation. Next slide, please. We will now proceed to the voting and discussion item portion of the agenda. The audience will see a list of those items on your screen over the next couple of slides. These include a final rulemaking amending 58 PA code uh, uh, 61.2 to address the striped bass fishery, three final rulemakings amending our miscellaneous special regulations. Next slide, please. A, pro a proposed rulemaking amending 58 PA code section 57.8A relating to Class A wild trout streams, two designations concerning Class A and wild trout streams. Next slide, please. The first item for consideration is an amendment to 58 PA code section 61.2 to address the striped bass fishery. And I will turn proceedings over to Chris Kuhn for his presentation. Good morning, commissioners and members of the public tuning in. My name's Chris Kuhn and I'm the director of the Bureau of Fisheries. I'm going to be presenting the, the next seven agenda items that were just introduced uh, by Wayne, uh, beginning here with amendment to uh, section 61.2 uh, regarding the the striped bass fishery in the Delaware River West Branch and Estuary. Um, this presentation is 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 somewhat of, of review, and you have seen multiple um, presentations on this topic, beginning with uh, an, an informative uh, inf uh, presentation by Brian Chakotis, Area Fisheries Management. Brian Chakotis introducing. Uh, this topic uh, back in January, and you you heard uh, the the proposed rulemaking uh, for this in in April. Uh, so in terms of this discussion, we're going to consider the the Delaware River and two distinct river reaches, and 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 that is uh, the the free flowing uh, non tidal portion of the river, uh, which extends 196 river miles uh, from the Pennsylvania New York. Uh, border downstream to the Calhoun Street Bridge. Uh, the other section in terms of this, this regulation that we're going to be discussing will be the estuary, which is basically the Delaware-Pennsylvania line upstream to the Calhoun Street Bridge, which is 56 tidal river, river miles. Next slide, please. And so the reason why we're having this discussion is because the Atlantic Coastal uh, Striped Bass stock is, is not in very good shape right now. It has been determined by the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission based on a recent uh, 2018 stock assessment uh, that the stock is overfished and overfishing is occurring. Uh, as part of the management plan for striped bass, when certain thresholds are met, that triggers regulatory action to begin rebuilding the stock. And that is where we're at right now and, and the reason for these actions. Essentially, the female spawning stock biomass has been in decline since 2010 and is, is currently below the threshold identified in the management plan that triggers action. Additionally, we are experiencing low recruitment uh, of, and high fishing mortality rates, and that has been occurring for the low recruitment, uh, particularly during the period of 2005 to 2011. Next slide. And so the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission has, has mandated that uh, coastal states reduce fishing mortality to address this decline in the stock by at least 18% coastwide. And one of the primary measures in doing so is to implement a, a, a slot limit regulation, uh, basically fish between 28 and less than 35 inches and a one fish daily krill limit uh, to, to, to get to the 18% reduction in the recreational aspect of, of the striped bass fishery. 
Uh, additionally, conservation equivalency is accepted as a regulatory option. In other words, that means that some variation of regulation changes can be can be enacted by states uh, to to get to that same end of an 18% reduction in fishing mortality. And states were also um, uh, required to implement a mandatory circle hook regulation by January 1st, 2021. The reduction in the, the fishing mortality, the 18% actions needed to be in place by April 1st of this year. Next slide. And so prior to April 1st of, of this year, uh, this slide shows what the, the previous regulations were uh, on, on the Delaware River West Branch and estuary striped bass fishery. Basically, it was uh, uh, upstream from the Calhoun Street Bridge, uh, 28 inches, one fish. And uh, also, we had a spring slot season, basically uh, from April to May. 31st, uh, 21 to less than 25 inches, and that was a two fish daily limit. Next slide. And so in order to um, meet the timeline that was established by the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, the executive director uh, enacted a temporary change to fi fishing regulations, which began on April 1st of 2020, and this is the regulation that's currently in place. And so it, it changed the, 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 the sizes and krill limits uh, previously described on the last slide to what you see here, which, which is uh, the, the primary change is to implement a slot limit um, rather than a greater than 20, 28 inches or greater size limit on, on the uh, upper river. Uh, above Calhoun Street Bridge, as well as uh, slightly reduce that slot size uh, from 21 to less than 24 inches in a two fish uh, daily limit. You recall that that was 20, 25 inches. And based on um, some some st statistical analysis and other things, that should that should uh, get us to where we need to be in Pennsylvania by reducing uh, fishing mortality by 18%. This is currently in place, as I mentioned, from the temporary change in April. Uh, the next steps in the regulatory process to finalize this regulation were the proposed rulemaking at the April Commission meeting, and now this is the final step to finalize this regulatory change through final rulemaking. Next slide. And so as I previously mentioned, the other aspect of this was to implement a uh, circle hook requirement. Uh, basically, the use of non-offset inline circle hooks are required when fishing with bait for any species of fish in the estuary. And the estuary is defined uh, as, as the portion down downriver from the Calhoun Street Bridge, but to include tributaries to the est estuary to the tidal uh, extent of the tidal influence. And the reason for this is the catch and release practices have been shown to substantially contribute to overall fishing mortality. And circle hooks uh, reduce catch and release mortality for striped bass and other fish. Uh, basically, it results in the fish being hooked in the mouth and simpl simplifying the hook removal and reducing injury to the released fish. This was this was enacted in April. Pennsylvania was was proactive. You'll recall that uh, Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission required states to do this by January 1st of 2021. Uh, we rolled this in with the, the krill and size limit change in on April 1. Next slide. And so a notice of proposed designations was or rulemaking was published at at uh, Pennsylvania Bulletin on August 1st, 2020, Exhibit A. And the commission received a total of two public comments regarding the proposal. One comment supports the proposal and one comment does not pertain to the proposal. Next slide. Staff recommend the commission adopt the amendment as set forth in the notice of proposed rulemaking. If adopted, the amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin.
this time I want to remind commissioners to please identify themselves whenever speaking for the benefit of our audience. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I, I move that date. We have a second. This is Commissioner Gibney. I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Uh, next item for consideration is an amendment to 58 PA code section 65.24 uh, relating to miscellaneous special regulations at Lake Pleasant, Erie County. The presenter is Chris Kuhn. Uh, Lake. Chris, you're Thank muted. You. Okay, Chris, can you so, start from uh, the beginning, please? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, so, so as you recall, I, I pre as I previously mentioned, this this item was uh, voted on notationally. Uh, prior to the April meeting. So this presentation will be new uh, uh, for you to see here today. And it is essentially to add Lake Pleasant, Erie County to miscellaneous special regulations. And the reason for doing this is essentially to um, prevent the use of, of live bait, but when, when angling at Lake Pleasant, to reduce the potential to introduce aquatic invasive species in the form of, of fish primarily into Lake Pleasant. Next slide. And so Lake Pleasant is a 61 acre natural lake owned by the Commission of Pennsylvania, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and managed by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. It's located approximately 10.5 miles south east of the city of Erie. Now, the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy owns approximately 80% of the lake shoreline and uh, surrounding 350 acres of riparian land around the lake. Additionally, uh, there's two tracts of state game lands to the east and the west from Lake Pleasant that collectively serve to act as a buffer uh, to this lake from anthropogenic activities. High quality, panfish and largemouth bass fisheries are, are noted in, in Lake Pleasant. And the commission uh, annually plants adult trout in the preseason, in season and winter periods to provide recreational angling opportunities for stock trout. Uh, Lake Pleasant is one of the least impacted glacial lakes in this region and its natural flora and fauna are some of the most intact among similar water bodies in the region or natural lakes. The re resident fish community is a result of a unique historic glacial events and, and contains at least three Pennsylvania listed species, the black chin shiner, warmouth, and Iowa darter. Next slide. And this graphic, this map shows uh, Lake Pleasant uh, with the inset showing the geographic extent on the statewide perspective. Next slide, please. 
And so I mentioned uh, the, the, the impetus for this uh, addition to miscellaneous special regulations is over concern of aquatic invasive species introduction, uh, primarily through the act of fishing itself. And so unde undesirable fishes have been released into many of the lakes in northwestern Pennsylvania. Um, that's not limited to northwestern Pennsylvania. It's a problem we see uh, across the state in, in other water bodies as, as well. And, and oftentimes the, the, the vector for that introduction is, is through uh, fishing with, with live bait and bait bucket introduction, essentially. An example is the round goby, a well-documented, aggressive, and prolific aquatic invasive species um, that is, is established in the Lake Erie, it was recently discovered in Lake LaBeouf. It now threatens the, the French Creek drainage. Um, given the ecological value and history of preservation at Lake Pleasant uh, and, and, and its unique um, fish community and characteristics, uh, we feel that additional regulatory protection to avoid, uh, mitigate against it and avoid uh, for uh, AIS introductions is warranted here. Next slide. And so the regulation that we're suggesting is, is, is detailed here on this table and essentially it is unlawful to use any fish, live or dead, as bait while angling at Lake Pleasant except for salted minnows. Further, it is unlawful to release any fish into, the, into Lake Pleasant except for those caught while angling. Next slide. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published on August 1st, that's in Exhibit B, and the Commission received a total of six public comments regarding this proposal. All comments supported the proposal. Next slide. Staff recommend that the Commission adopt the amendment as set forth in the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. If adopted, the amendment will go into effect on January 1st of 2021. I'll turn it over to Wayne at this point. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Pastore. I make a motion that we adopt the staff recommendation. Do we have a second? Yeah, this is Commissioner Small, and I will second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will again call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Brock. Yeah. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. The uh, next item is uh, just as an amendment to 58 PA code section 6524 related to uh, Penns Creek section three in center in Mifflin counties. And again, Chris Kuhn will present. And so again, this is, this is somewhat of a familiar topic for the commissioners and, and the public, and that this is the final step to uh, basically extend the current miscellaneous special regulations currently applied to Penns Creek Section 3. Uh, you heard the, the proposal in, in April, and this is, this is the, the final rulemaking version of that. The current regulation, uh, miscellaneous special regulation that's currently applied to uh, Section 3 is scheduled to uh, sunset at the end of this year, so we desire to essentially extend that uh, 
after uh, December 31st. Next slide. And so Penns Creek is a, is a 67 mile uh, long tributary to the Susquehanna River uh, that begins in, in Center County in, in, in the vicinity of Penns Cave and uh, makes its path to the Susquehanna River uh, near, uh, just south of, the, of, the, of Sealands Grove. Uh, for the purpose of fisheries management, it's managed in, in eight river sections detailed here on this map and sections one through seven are managed uh, with, with various regulations either for wild trout and or, or stock trout. And so sections one, two, three, four, and five are actually designated as, as class A stream sections. The, the, the section of interest here today uh, regarding this, pertaining to this proposal is section three. Next slide. And this map shows uh, section three. It is bas basically, it, it extends from seven miles from the confluence with Elk Creek in, in Coburn downstream to 600 meters uh, downstream of the confluence with Swift Run. Next slide. And section three has had a varied management history over the years. So prior to uh, 1992, it was managed as a stock trout water. However, um, biological surveys conducted around that time period uh, documented a class A and it was subsequent, class A wild brown trout population and it was subsequently designated class A and stocking was discontinued in favor of, of wild trout management. Um, shortly thereafter, uh, both, both the social and, and biological components of the fishery were evaluated from staff, and this stream section was rolled into what is currently our all-tackle trophy trout regulation, and it was managed there uh, from 1995 to 2013. Uh, in 2014, again, staff uh, reviewed the biological and social components of this fishery and updated information on, on those aspects of the fishery and recommended and moved this into a miscellaneous special regulation, a slot limit, uh, where it's been from 2014 to 2020, the current regulations that are currently applied to this, this stream section. Essentially, this regulation is year round, allows for year round fishing and the use of all tackle with the harvest of two trout between seven inches but less than 12 inches from the opening day of trout season through Labor Day and no harvest the remainder of the year. Next slide, please. And so post and, and pre-implementation of this regulation, staff monitored uh, both the biological uh, that is to say, the, the 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 wild brown trout fishery, as well as the social aspects of this this fishery. Um, biologically speaking, um, we saw a, a, a substantial increase during the time period that this regulation was applied to Section Three uh, of catch rate of large brown trout or brown trout greater than 16 inches during our annual electrofishing assessments. Additionally, in 2019. Staff conducted an intensive uh, angler use, harvest, and opinion survey. And the, 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 the summary of, of, of the results of that survey were that we documented very low harvest of fish, those fish between the seven and less than 12 inches that are allowed to be harvested, um, but also documented very high support for continuing these regulations on Section 3. Next slide. And so this is the current regulation that's on the books um, that we are recommending to uh, extend uh, beyond 2020. And the only difference here is that the, the last part on under the special regulations column is that instead of having a, a, an end date to the regulation, we're recommending that this miscellaneous special regulation remain in effect until further notice. Next slide. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published August 1st uh, of 2020 in the Pennsylvania Bulletin, and that's Exhibit C. 
The Commission received a total of 127 comments regarding this proposal. 86 comments support the proposal, 20 comments propose the proposal. In other words, the comments that we received that were in opposition to this proposal all recommended more restrictive regulations when they identified an alternate to this. And so that was approximately 19 out of the 20. Uh, preferred more, more uh, restrictive regulations in the form of catch and release variations, whether it be all tackle, fly fishing, or artificial lures. And 21 of the comments received did not pertain to the proposal. Next slide. Staff recommended the Commission adopt the amendment as set forth in the Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. If adopted, the amendment will go into effect on January 1st of 2021. That's the end of this presentation, and I'll turn it over to Wayne. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Brock. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Anderson. I will second it. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion of this item? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. No. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Commissioner Small, I didn't catch your vote. Yes. Thank you. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. This item is an amendment to 58 PA code section 6524, amending our miscellaneous special regulations at Bald Eagle Creek in Center County. Again, Chris Kuhn will present. And yes, this, this, is, this is the last of our final rulemaking here, here this morning. Uh, and it's basically to move a section of, uh, a portion of current section three of Bald Eagle Creek in Center, Center County into a miscellaneous miscellaneous special regulation program that essentially mirrors our current delayed harvest artificial lures only regulations. Uh, however, this, this pilot uh, approach to a delayed harvest environment or regulatory setting would allow for the use of all tackle. Next slide. And so just to provide a little bit of background, um, the, the delayed harvest artificial lures only Keystone Select Stock Trout Waters program, um, which is applied to Keystone Select pro, pro, uh, Stock Trout Waters program is applied to a, a subset of our overall delayed harvest uh, waters or regulated areas. Uh, this is a very popular program among anglers and, and stream sections ma managed under these regulations receive very high angler use and satisfaction. We've conducted early on in the process of, of designating waters into Keystone Select uh, uh, an angler use and, and, and opinion survey and the information that we received back was, was, was very positive and there was, there was also uh, uh, a desire to expand this program. And so that's what we did. We, 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 we started out with eight waters and we, we expanded the program to the current 23. And this is, this, this is um, basically these waters are stocked with large trout 
at a rate of up to 250 trout per mile. And, and this rate mirrors or, 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 or tries to replicate uh, the, the, the number of, of trout in our, our highest quality Class A wild trout water statewide. And staff have been working to identify stream section as a pilot to this, a variation to allow for the use of all tackle, um, because the, the, all the other waters are managed in, in, the, in the artificial lures, uh, traditional version of this regulatory package. And a reach of Bald Eagle Creek in the current section three in Center County has been identified um, as, as a good option for this program. If this, uh, were to be adopted by the commission, uh, the staff would, would use this reach of stream to compare angler use and preferences on this reach to other waters included in the, in the Keystone Select program. Next slide. So Bald Eagle Creek is approximately 52 miles in length, uh, beginning uh, in, in the vicinity of Port Matilda and flowing to its confluence with the West Branch Susquehanna River. And it is managed for the purpose of fisheries management in six stream sections. Sections two, three, and four are all managed uh, with, uh, as part of the stocked trout waters program. And section four is one of the 13 stocked class A sections uh, that we have statewide. Next slide. And so this is this is a, the, the reach of, of 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 stream that is is pertains to this proposal, which is uh, it, approximately a a point eight six mile long stretch uh, located uh, in, in in the vicinity of of Julian uh, at, at at the Soaring Eagle Wetland on the Wildlife for Everyone property. Next slide. As I mentioned, it's, it's located on the Wildlife for Everyone Foundation Soaring Eagle Wetland. And, and what, what makes this unique uh, to this area is there are currently uh, or have planned amenities uh, that, that, that we don't see on other specially regulated waters around the state to include an ADA compliant boardwalk, handicap accessible fish, fishing platform, uh, an ample parking area uh, at, at the uh, uh, Soaring Eagle Wetland Facility, uh, restrooms, educational pavilions. Additionally, this stream section was the, uh, was enhanced with habitat uh, work in the form of mud sills, rock deflectors, and random boulders, which would provide good cover for stock trout to remain in the area uh, into into the early summer. Uh, landowners and local support for this proposed regulation uh, uh, have been very good and it's located to close to population areas. And one thing that's, that, that, that this, this stream section would also serve if, if moved into this, this pilot program is that we don't have uh, any Keystone, any waters in the Keystone Select Stock Trout Waters Program in the center part of the state. So this would help to fill that, fill that void in an all tackle variation of our current program. Next slide. And this, this is the table that uh, details the regulation. Essentially, the piece of water uh, of interest is, is extends from 0.38 miles upstream of Steel Hollow Run to 0.48 miles downstream of Steel Hollow Run. And essentially, as I mentioned before, it's on the um, uh, Soaring Eagle Wetland property, property primarily. And it, it mirrors our uh, current delayed harvest uh, artificial lures program with the exception that it allows for the use of all tackle. If, if, if approved, this would uh, remain in effect until further notice. Next slide. A notice of proposed rulemaking was published on September 12th of 2020, that's in Exhibit D, and the Commission received a total of two public comments regarding the proposal. Both comments support the proposal. Next slide. 
Staff recommend the commission adopt the amendment as set forth in the notice of proposed rulemaking. If adopted, the amendment will go into effect on January 1, 2020. That's the end of this presentation and I'll turn it over to Wayne. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Brock. I'll make that motion. This is Commissioner Anderson. This is Commissioner Anderson. I will second it. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Yes, this is Commissioner Ally. I um, want my fellow commissioners to know that I was at the groundbreaking event for the Soaring Eagle project um, yesterday. Um, Mike Parker pre prepared some really good talking points for me. Unfortunately, due to kind time constraints, I was unable to give them. But I just want my fellow commissioners to know that this is a very worthwhile project, particularly for wheelchair-bound fishermen. And I'm very excited about the fact that there, there will be a boardwalk that will allow transport with the um, um, wheelchairs. Furthermore, I think it gives our biologists a really novel way of assessing bait hooked returned trout as opposed to lure hooked return trout and and I think that's that'll be good for the rest of the state as a earmark if you will thank you is there any other discussion yes this is uh, commissioner oh. Hussar Chris uh, what was what was the total length of that uh, the the proposed was it point eight miles? It, yeah, it's just just under a mile at point eight six stream miles. Thank you. This is Commissioner Lewis. Discussion? This is Commissioner Lewis. <clears throat> Chris, um, I can't flip back on these slides, so remind me again what the change is from the existing reg. So Commissioner Lewis, the existing regulation we have in, in section three, which is a much larger stream section, is standard statewide regulations. And so we would be, we would be carving out a, a, a small, uh, essentially 0.86 mile long stretch to move into a delayed harvest regulatory setting. Uh, but it would be different from our current program in that it would allow for the use of all tackle. This section would also be included in our Keystone Select Stock Trout Waters program and receive a larger portion of, of, of large fish at a rate of up to 250 fish per mile. Perfect, thank you for that summary. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Commissioners, we are approaching the time for our first scheduled recess. So rather than uh, uh, 
interrupting an item in the middle. In the in the middle, uh, we'll take that recess now. It's 10:25. We'll mute the microphones until 10:30. At what time? At which time, we will resume the meeting. Thank you. Okay.
my clock reads uh, 1030, so we'll uh, end the recess and uh, resume with a proposed rulemaking amending 58 PA code section 57.8A relating to class A wild trout streams. Once again, Chris Kuhn will be presenting. And so you'll recall at the July meeting, you received a variation of this proposal, essentially an amendment to 578A that included the, the, the aspect to remove, remove the requirement for the executive director to seek board authorization. That was tabled and the, the proposal was reworked to eliminate that aspect. Uh, but the intent of this presentation and this proposal is to essentially memorialize the criteria or internal decision-making criteria that would be used to consider the stocking of a Class A wild trout stream moving forward. Next slide. So before we do that, just, just to review, uh, I, I'd like to go over the wild trout classification system that we use in Pennsylvania. And so uh, class E is uh, streams that have no documented wild trout reproduction or no wild trout residing in those stream sections. And then we have class D and C, which are non-species specific criteria. Class D is essentially total wild trout biomass of greater than zero kilograms per hectare. And if you recall, kilograms per hectare is, is, is analogous to pounds per acre, uh, but is essentially a area measurement of the, the weight of, of trout occupying a stream reach and that is greater than zero to less than 10 kilograms per hectare. And that can be either, either wild browns, brooks, et cetera. Class C is the next step up, and that is a biomass of greater than or equal to 10 kilograms per hectare, but less than 20 kilograms per hectare. Our next class is, is Class B, uh, and this is where we step into the species-specific uh, criteria for Class B. And for wild brook trout, that is greater than or equal to 20 kilograms per hectare, but less than 30 kilograms per hectare. Uh, for wild brown trout, it is greater than 20 kilograms per hectare, but less than 40 kilograms per hectare. Next slide. And so, more germane to the topic of, of this proposed amendment is the Class A uh, criteria. And so we it's a little more uh, involved than the others, uh, but we have different categories here. Basically, wild brook trout, uh, Class A criteria is total wild brook trout biomass of greater than 30 kilograms per hectare. Uh, moving to wild brown trout, that steps it up from 30 to 40. The minimum criteria for that is, is 40 kilograms per hectare of, of biomass of, of wild brown trout. And then we have wild rainbow trout, uh, which is, is different than the other classifications or criteria, rather, in that uh, it, it, is, it is less than 15 centimeters but greater than 2 kilogram per hectare. And that is to rec it's, it's, it's basically recognizing natural reproduction of rainbow trout and, and the unique um, prevalence of these fisheries uh, around Pennsylvania that primarily um, occur in our, our limestone spring streams. And finally, we have a classification of cla uh, or categorization of class A's for mixed trout fisheries. And basically that's a combined trout biomass of 40 kilograms per hectare, um, but the individual trout species biomass must, must be less than 75% of the total combined biomass. And so our Class A wild trout streams certainly represent the best of the Commonwealth's wild trout resources, and they comprise only approximately 3% of all flowing water in Pennsylvania. Um, as, of, as of July uh, of this year, uh, we currently have uh, 1,032 Class A designated stream sections that comprise uh, 2,759 stream miles. 
Next slide. And so uh, just a little history to this amendment, and, and it leads into our, our further discussion, is that th this, was, this amendment was changed in 2015. The statement of policy was amended essentially to require the executive director to obtain board approval prior to granting permission to stock a Class A wild trout stream. So prior to 2015, the executive director had the authority to basically uh, waive the requirement and, and provide an exemptions to, to uh, Class A wild trout streams to continue stocking. This was done on very, very, very few instances. And so this was changed to require board approval in 2015, and the, and the text that's bolded here at the end is the addition to that change. Basically, the, the language was added that with rare exceptions, these stream sections are managed solely for the perpetuation of wild trout fishery with no stocking. However, there may be circumstances that justify stocking a Class A wild trout stream. Prior to granting permission to stock a Class A wild trout stream under Section 71.4, the executive director will obtain the approval of the commission. Next slide. And so following this change, staff developed internal decision-making criteria for continued uh, commission stocking of Class A streams. Uh, essentially, there were 13 stream sections that were currently in the Stock Trout Waters program um, stocked by the Fish and Boat Commission that were suspected to support strong Class A wild brown trout streams, but they were not physically uh, or, or not officially designated as such. Uh, all these streams had some common characteristics, the one, be, one being high angler use. Uh, they received uh, very high angler use in the early season with, with folks targeting the stock trout component of the fishery. Uh, they were primarily located in high density human population centers, uh, basically in suburban or urban areas. They were of sufficient size and character to support both stocked and wild trout fisheries. And it's important to note that the Class A populations developed in the presence of stocking and high angler use during the early portion of trout season. Next slide. And so the, the criteria that staff developed uh, that, that, that were used to uh, consider these streams for stocking uh, are, are, are list, essentially listed here. And the, the, the first is that the stream section stocked by the, by the commission with adult trout the year immediately prior to designation as a Class A. So it, before it was designated Class A, it was, it, was, it was in our stock trout waters program. Here's the high angler use aspect. So angler use in the stream section equals or exceeds the 50th percentile during the opening weekend of trout season. And this is, this is determined through opening day angler counts conducted by biologists. And we have a large data set of our stock trout waters. And these waters rise to the top in terms of angler use. The, the, the trout species stocked in these streams would be different from the primary component of the wild trout fishery. So these are all brown trout fisheries, so they were stocked with rainbows. Stocking numbers and frequency would not exceed those of the year prior to the Class A designation, and stream sections managed for wild brook trout would not be eligible for stocking uh, if designated as Class A. And finally, as, as previously discussed, the executive director would obtain commission approval prior to consideration of stocking any Class A water. Next slide. And so this, this, this graphic just shows the statewide distribution of the 13 stream sections that are currently designated as Class A but also continue to be stocked by the PFBC. Uh, you have a cluster in the, in the center part of the state, the eastern part of the state, and then two sections in, in Bedford County in the south central portion of the state. Next slide. 
And so it's important to note here that, you know, as, as staff identify Class A wild trout streams, uh, that all efforts are taken to uh, mitigate the loss of, of stock trout angling opportunities that, that, that occurs when a, when a water is designated Class A and uh, stocking is discontinued. Uh, but the vast majority of our Class A streams are certainly managed for wild trout with no stocking, and that's, we feel that that's the best management approach. And so when uh, uh, stocking is discontinued on these waters, we consistently uh, respond to public concerns and, and by stressing their importance, the high quality self-sustaining fisheries they support and their social, ecological, and economic value. And one of the first things that we do prior to removing a stock trout water from the stocking list is to identify a new stock trout water in the vicinity of the Class A stream section. Um, that's sometimes not easily done, but we've been we've been have a good track record with it lately, with all the Class A designations, and we've been able to find, uh, for the most part, replacement waters for for newly designated Class As. And in some cases, the opportunity is to increase stocking rates or stocking frequency in a nearby stock trout water. So we may have a water that is being stocked at less than the maximum rate in an area or does not receive multiple stockings in terms of, say, two pre or two in season stockings. And so in those situations, we have the opportunity to increase the number of trout in, in a nearby water. And, and certainly some of these waters are, are stocked by cooperative nurseries and angler groups. And staff make recommendations for those, those groups, the co-ops and others, to redirect fish previously stocked in a newly Class A stream section to nearby waters because in the, for the most part, these waters are best managed for solely for, for the perpetuation of the wild trout fishery. Next slide. And so, as I mentioned, historically, there's been very few Class A stream sections where stocking was considered or warranted. However, there are additional scenarios other than what were described in the previously uh, mentioned internal decision-making criteria that may warrant uh, consideration of, of, of a stocking exemption. Uh, for example, pre-existing youth fishing derbies or fishing clubs uh, and private landowners may be unaware of, of Class A designations and continue to stock. And oftentimes, uh, private stockings are unknown to the Fish and Boat Commission until a landowner discovers that a Class A has been stocked, and that often occurs sometimes right before uh, a scheduled stocking. There may be rare cases or circumstances where a stocking exemption should be considered. Next slide. And so some of these potential scenarios are, are listed here. Uh, the one, first one, as previously mentioned, a pre-existing youth fishing derby and, and special use areas that were properly permitted by the, the Fish and Boat Commission and have a history of more than one past occurrence. So this, this, this scenario would make up, we believe, the, the, the majority of any potential exemptions that would be considered uh, should should this the, the, this this approach be adopted moving forward? The second is is pre-existing private stockings on a private property on a recently designated Class A stream section. And what what I mean by recently designated, and it will become uh, more apparent as we move through the presentation towards the proposed amended. Uh, language to the code is that that means within one year of posting in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And these stream sections would have to be closed to public angling at the time of, of designation and at least since 2010 and have stocking records that would be verifiable by the Fish and Boat Commission and have a history of more than one past occurrence. Next slide. And so the third scenario is essentially the incorporating all the, 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 the internal decision-making criteria that I previously described um, for the 13 stock Class A sections that we her currently have. Um, however, it would, it would include uh, 
the, the, the stipulation to basically <clears throat> Uh, be a recently designated Class A as opposed to the, to the language that was originally used in that, that proposed amendment. And finally, we have previously received an exemption or special activities for, per permit from the PFBC between 2010 and present. And, and so if it were time limited uh, and expired, this would be considered a new request and evaluated on the other criteria. And this, this is basically a small class category of, of potential waters. And as, as I mentioned early on in this presentation, uh, prior to 2015, the executive director had the authority to issue an exemption. So this would bring any of those older exemptions that were issued into the mix for consideration. Next slide. And so we look at this as a common sense approach for dealing with a complex situation. So we have oftentimes, as I mentioned, we have, we have uh, 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 stream sections that are designated Class A don't become aware to a landowner until the designation, and we're often informed about this, um, sometimes at the last minute. But this approach provides a, a mechanism for transparent, timely, and consistent consideration of possible exemptions. It puts the criteria out there uh, for the public to see and understand um, where there might be consideration for exemptions, but recognizes also that the vast majority of these Class A's are best managed for, for, for wild trout with no stocking. And the criteria that I previously described are essentially to, 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 to keep rare exceptions, exemptions rare. And consideration would be given to only to requests for stocking in stream sections within one year of the section being designated as a Class A and posted in the bulletin. And so that stipulation is so that we don't start considering uh, waters that have been on the Class A list for some time and have not been stocked in this. That's not the intent of this. And so sh should, it, should an exemption be granted, uh, the, the Fish and Boat Commission would determine the species of trout number of trout and frequency of stocking consistent with stocking tr strategies and historical stocking rates. And as I previously mentioned also, and it's important to note, that streams with wild brook trout populations we, will not be considered. And so the next steps for this is that if, if the Commission approves a publication of notice of, of proposed rulemaking uh, and solicits comments uh, following today's meeting and tomorrow's meeting, uh, then we would bring final rulemaking in this regard back to the Commission in, in sometime in, in 2021. Additionally, the criteria that were detailed in this presentation and in the agenda item will be, will be memorialized in the operational guidelines for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania Waters 5th edition. Staff are currently working to update that, the, the 4th edition uh, came out in January of 2011, and we're working to update the operational guidelines and have that completed and available on PFBC's website by the end of the year, sometime in, 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 in December. Next slide. And so here's the, the, the proposed uh, amendment to 578A. Essentially, the change is highlighted and, and, and underlined in and, and bolded text. I won't read all of it, but the addition is that the executive director will consult internal decision-making criteria set forth in the operational guidelines for the management of trout fisheries in Pennsylvania waters to consider the need for continued stocking at newly designated Class A wild trout streams and obtain the, the approval of the commission. So that aspect will remain unchanged. Consideration will only be given to requests for continued stocking in stream sections within one year of the section being designated as a Class A and posted in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. However, entities that previously received an exemption or a special activities permit for continued stocking from the Commission between 2010 and the effective date of this amendment will remain eligible for consideration. Next slide. 
So staff recommend that the commission approve the publication of a notice of proposed rulemaking containing the amendment described in a commentary. If adopted on final rulemaking, this amendment will go into effect upon publication in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And that's the end of the presentation, and I can turn it over to Wayne and commissioners for any discussion. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I move to accept the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Pastore. I second that motion. Hearing a motion in a second. Do we have any discussion? Yes, this is Commissioner Charlesworth. Um, as a commissioner, um, I see the necessity for continuing those uh, special programs uh, that have a history. And I understand that. The question I have is uh, when changing um, or stocking is made a decision, is the commissioner, are the commissioners uh, notified first? So the way the, the way this would work, Commissioner Charlesworth, and it's it's essentially the same process as as we have in place currently, um, other than the, the, it's 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 called out in in the code that the, the the criteria will be memorialized in the operational guidelines. So the way this would functionally play out is that staff would identify a, a, a water or a group of water to say perhaps in the category of the children's fishing derby. So they're, they're pre-existing fishing derbies that occur on a class A water. Those waters would then be brought before the commission for a, 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 a determination as to whether to continue stocking. So it would be a formal vote of the commission as I understand it. And Wayne can correct me on that if I if if, if I'm 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 wrong. Uh, Chris, I believe you're correct. This is Commissioner Anderson. I'd like to make a comment. I would prefer to see this left as uh, a situation that could be handled between mission staff the executive director and the district commissioner uh, to make a decision on. I don't see a, a need that it would have to go before the full commission. That's my comment. This is Commissioner Hussar. Um, we do vote on all Class A water streams as a commission, so um, I would, um, and that takes board approval. So I would, uh, I would follow suit with the recommendations that Chris made, and um, in regards to a commission vote on looking at streams going forward. This is Mr. Pastore. I just have a question about the text, the very last sentence. I just want to be sure I understand it because first it says consideration will only be given to requests made within one year of the Class A designation, and then it continues on, but entities that previously received an exemption will be eligible. And so I'm just trying to understand that. Does that mean you can only get an exemption one year, the first year after it's designated? Or do you ha have to uh, ask for an exemption in the first year, but you can continue to get it for multiple years after that first year? I'm just not sure what the intention is there. So, Commissioner Pastore, those are essentially two different uh, scenarios describing two two different scenarios. So, the first is uh, for newly designated Class A uh, stream sections. 
they, if, if, if a stream section is designated as a Class A, for example, and has a small portion of that where they ha hold, annually hold a children's fishing derby, then that would be eligible for consideration if action is taken to continue stocking for the children's fishing derby if action is taken within one year of posting in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. And so that is, that is so that uh, essentially we, we don't have a situation where a stream be designated as Class A and then um, be not stocked for a period of time and then have someone come in and, and, and initiate a children's derby that has, has not occurred in the past and ask for a stock, stocking exemption. The second scenario um, basically refers to um, the fourth criteria that I described in, 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 in that, um, where it talks about entities that previously received an exemption or special activities permit. And so this is, this is for the situation where, say, prior to um, 2015, an executive director may have issued an, org an exemption for a group to stock a particular piece of a Class A water for whatever reason. And so these would be very few and far between. Um, and, and, and so they're, they're slightly different scenarios in there, and, and the way the text is written is to account for both those situations. This is uh, Commissioner Ally. Chris, under this proposal, I think I've got it right, whereas um, if a new sportsman's group, et cetera, would come up and want to utilize one of the Class A streams for a fishing derby that has never been done before, they could petition that under this rule and be considered, other than wild brook trout. Am I correct in that? No, that's not exactly correct. So it, 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 you'll see in the text of the the agenda item, and I believe through the presentation, is that these these would have to have a, a history. So in other words, this would have been occurring at the time or before the time of Class A designation. And so it would not bring into the mix a, a, a situation where a stream is designated as Class A and then after it is designated as Class A, it would be, then be eligible for consideration of an exemption. That's not the intent of this, as we did not want to open it up to the whole universe of Class A's that are out there, only newly designated Class A's that have pre-existing activities occurring on them. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Abstain. Commissioner Anderson. No. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. <coughs> yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Next item is a uh, proposed changes to the list of Class A wild trout streams. Chris Kuhn again presenting. 
Yes, yeah, so this is the, 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 the proposed addition of, of Class A wild trout streams, uh, similar format to what we've had in the last two virtual meetings. Uh, you were provided in, in advance of this uh, meeting the, the details of, of the proposed streams and the date supporting data of that. It's also posted on our on our Fish and Boat Commission website and available for the public there. And so a notice of proposed designation was published on August 15th that's of, of this year, that's Exhibit F. The commission received a total of 102 public comments regarding the proposal. 86 support the proposal. One supports the designation of a specific water three oppose the designation, and 12 oppose the designation of a specific water. Next slide. As such, staff recommend that the commission add six stream sections to its Class A wild trout streams list as described in the commentary. If approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. That's the end of this, this, this presentation pertaining to Class A's, and I'll turn it over to Wayne. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? This is Commissioner Kaufman. I move to accept the recommendation. This is Commissioner Pastore. I second that motion. Hearing a motion in the second, do we have any discussion? And, uh, this is Tim Schaefer, and I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll remind commissioners and the public that um, while we didn't go through the full um, uh, presentation of, of all the individual streams, everything is in the commissioner's packet. Everything has been shared with the public in terms of the data that's been used to support the uh, designations. Any further discussion? Uh, Commissioner Anderson, I'd like to make a comment. Two of the streams, Freeman Run and Medix Run, I have uh, concerns over with public uh, comment that uh, we received there. I would like to see them uh, be continued to be stocked, at least allowed to be stocked by the uh, cooperative nurseries that have uh, stocked them in the past. That's my commentary. Uh, this is Commissioner Brock. Um, my only comment is that, you know, I, I think we need to continue to do a better job of, of explaining what class A is. I mean, we do it internally, but I'm not sure from the public image we're doing it. it it's kind of like um, it either is or it isn't. I mean, I, I think, you know, we rely on um, the biologist to, to give us that answer. And some of these some of these streams are very controversial. I struggled with this one a little bit. It's in my district. I know um, some folks were unhappy, but at the same time, I don't think we're doing enough um, to explain class A, what it means, how it could benefit the anglers, how it could benefit kids and fisher, their anglers 30 years down the road. Um, so I think in the future, we, you know, Tim and I have talked about this because I, I don't think people see it as a threat, not as a good thing. And that's, that's something I think we're gonna have to overcome as we continue to designate these streams and, and, and possibly protect those wild trout from harvesting. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. No. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. 
Yes. Commissioner Saar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. The next item is next item is a designation classification of wild trout streams. Again, Chris Kuhn will present. Chris, you're still muted. So yes, uh, this is a, a, a similar approach to the Class A uh, wild trout uh, presentation that you just, just received in that this is a streamlined approach given the virtual setting that we're currently uh, in with our, our commission meetings. So the data has been provided to you and, and the, the list of waters uh, in your commissioner packets prior to the meeting additionally is available for the public on our on the Fish and Boat Commission website for, for viewing. And so I'll just jump right into um, the, the, the public comments and it, the, the designation was published on August 15th and it's in, it described in Exhibit H. And the commission received a total of 83 public comments regarding the proposed designations. 82 support the proposed designations and one did not pertain to the proposed designations. Next slide. As such, staff recommended the commission add 16 new waters to the commission's list of class A, or wild trout streams as set forth in the notice of proposed designations. If approved, these additions will go into effect upon publication of a second notice in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. That's the end of the presentation and I'll turn it over to Wayne. Commissioners, we have a staff recommendation. Do you have a motion on this item? Move to accept the staff recommendation. Was uh, uh, Vice President Kaufman, I believe? Yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, yeah, just in case. I'll, I'll again uh, move to accept the staff recommendation. This is Commissioner Please. Pastore. I second that motion. Hearing a motion and a second, do we have any discussion? Hearing none, I will call a roll call vote. Commissioner Ally. Yes. Commissioner Anderson. Yes. Commissioner Brock. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Charlesworth. Yes. Commissioner Gibney. Yes. Commissioner Hassar. Yes. Commissioner Pastore. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Vice President Kaufman. Yes. President Lewis. Yes. Commissioners, the motion passes. Next slide, please. Commissioners, we have come to the end of the schedule for the first day of this public meeting. At this time, do we have a motion to recess this meeting until tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m.? Commissioner Charlesworth, so moved. This is Commissioner Ally. I second that motion. We'll do a vo voice vote. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you all for your attendance. This meeting is recessed until tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. <laughs>